Hi, my name is David Carramiana and I'm going to provide a brief presentation about the project I have developed for the, the last subject, which is about sound source location for unmanned aerial vehicles. A sound source location problem consists in determining the relative location of an interest sound source given a recording where the sound is present. This recording usually has several channels. In our case, it is a 8-channel audio. Um, from this 8-channel audio, we want to infer both the distance and the direction of arrival of the source with respect to the recorder position. This direction of arrival information can be decomposed between the azimuth value and the elevation value. In our case, we're going to solve this problem using deep learning and regarding a drone use case. Although multiple acoustic features can be used to solve the source location problem, the most common one is the time difference of arrival between different signals, that is, between the different channels of the recording. In order to obtain this time difference of arrival, there are different techniques, which can be based on correlation, beamforming, which is a kind of spatial filtering of the signal, and also matrix decomposition, that is uh, to project the recording into different subspaces that represent the signal. In any case, once the time difference of arrival is known, then we need to do a mapping between this time difference of arrival and the information we want, which is the direction of arrival, which is usually made using a propagation model. Uh, the most common of them is the free space propagation model. All of these techniques can be considered traditional techniques or techniques that are based on uh, signal processing algorithms. In our case, we're going to approach the problem using deep learning. After a literature review, we have found a wide variety of, of approaches. For input, there are several papers which use from the raw audio to pre-computed uh, audio features such as the spectrogram, the phase component of the spectrogram, the metal spectrogram, and so on. Usually, the, more, the most common architecture is uh, a convolutional neural network to extract some features, and then some dense layers are used either to solve the problem as a classification one or as a regression one. However, we have also found uh, different architectures that also use uh, bidirectional LSTMs and some different neural networks that can be seen in more detail in the report. We are going to use an already created dataset, which is named Dragon or Drone Ego Noise Localization for our project. This dataset is composed uh, of several recordings made from a cubic rate of eight microphones that is mounted on a drone. And there are several set of recordings in different scenarios. One of them is a drone flying with static sources at different volumes. We also have uh, recordings of the drone flying but without that sources. We also have uh, some recordings of only the sources without the drone echo noise and also some re additional recordings and information about the engine speed and engine sound are available. In our first approach to solving the source location problem using uh, deep learning, we use only the free flight recording with sources, from which we were able to extract about 3,000 samples. 
Then an architecture was designed which consists in a convolutional neural network and some final dense layers. We use the spectrogram amplitude as input uh, for this network which was implemented in Keras and trained using the resources of Google Collaboratory. We obtained some results, uh, but they were worse than those obtained with traditional methods in the Dragon paper. Um, besides, we also reserve a recording uh, for testing purposes, and we saw that the network uh, didn't generalize. Uh, because uh, it wasn't able to predict uh, the correct output. Therefore, the conclusion was that we needed more information, we needed a larger data set. The different sources of information or of sound in the previous recordings are the sound source and the noise generated by the drone or drone echo noise. Taking this into account, we can build a larger dataset combining the sound-only recordings from different positions that we have and also the drone-only recordings in different flight phases. This way we have created a new dataset of 5 million possible samples where also uh, signal noise ratio variation is taken into account. To create this dataset, we have processed the different types of recordings into uh, 500 millisecond frames and then a list of all the possible combinations taking one sample of one set and another sample from the other and adding them, a list of these possible combinations is generated. This task is performed in a class named data store class. Then uh, a Keras data generator has been implemented so that samples are generated in training time, taking taken the information from the data store class. We have done this this way because uh, it was impossible to store information about all these possible samples. Once we have uh, the new data set with more samples, we have designed a set of experiments. We're going to compare two types of architectures. One end-to-end -end architecture, that is an architecture that uh, uses directly raw audio as input. And, and we are going to compare this uh, against uh, two other architectures that use pre-computed audio features which will be the spectrogram and the MEL spectrogram. Three, the three architectures are going to be composed of some convolutional uh, layers, either one-dimensional layers for the raw audio or two-dimensional layers for the two other cases. And in this case, we are going to use also uh, the dilation technique in order to uh, reduce the number of, of parameters. After these convolutional networks, some dense layers are used to solve the problem as a regression one. Uh, as training is very time intensive, uh, we have selected only 5,000 samples from the previous dataset and we have trained the three models for 50 epochs. Uh, in the training process, we have used the mean square error as a metric, but we are also going to compute mean absolute error in order to compare the different results. Once all the networks have been trained, we have obtained the results that are depicted uh, in this slide. Uh, we can say that all networks succeed in predicting azimuth, elevation and distance of the source with an acceptable level of accuracy. The best results are obtained in the end-to-end -end architecture, that is, the one using raw audio as input, 
with errors of a couple of degrees that are similar to the errors presented in the Dragon paper using the signal processing methods. The architectures that use the precomputed features obtain worse results than the one using raw audio while also taking longer time to train. After this brief discussion on the contents of the report, we can conclude that end-to-end -end neural networks can achieve similar prediction accuracy than traditional signal processing techniques and therefore can substitute the traditional signal processing algorithms provided that a sufficient amount of information is available. In this regard, and in our case, additional source recordings would be required to cover a wider variety of positions if we want to deploy uh, this system in a real environment. That's all from me. Uh, if any questions uh, come up, uh, do not hesitate in contact me uh, in contacting me via mail. Thank you very much, and stay safe.